Summary of Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card The Buggers, an alien race that has slaughtered millions of humans, pose a serious threat to Earth in the near future. In the last Bugger invasion, which happened 70 years before Ender's Game, the Buggers destroyed big parts of China. Mazer Rackham, the legendary pilot who led a fleet of spaceships to destroy the Bugger fleet, was the only one who stopped them from destroying the whole planet. So that humanity can win the next battle against the Buggers, the international fleet, IF, which is the most powerful military group on Earth, watches young children all over the world to see if any of them show signs of being military geniuses. The smartest kids are picked to go to battle school, where they learn how to fight. Ender Wigan is only six years old when the story starts. He is the third child of his parents. Peter Wigan and Valentine Wigan are his bigger brother and sister. One day at school, a boy named Stilson picks on Ender and makes him feel bad. Ender doesn't take Stilson's comments lying down. Instead, he kicks him over and over again. Then Ender goes home, where Peter starts to pick on him. Peter hates Ender, but Valentine, Peter's sister, loves him. The day after Ender's fight with Stilson, Colonel Hiram Graff comes to see the Wiggins and tells Ender's parents that he has a lot of military promise. Graff puts pressure on the Wiggins to let Ender go to battle school. He tells Ender that he will be trained to stop the buggers from attacking the planet. Ender agrees to fight in battle school, even though he will miss Valentine, the person he loves the most. Ender makes friends with Shen and Eli, two new students, during his first few months at battle school. Ender goes to school and plays a lot of war games, like the giant game, which is a computer recreation. Ender is soon sent to fight in an army. At battle school, older students are put in different armies and forced to fight each other in the battle room, a zero-gravity area where they can use laser guns to freeze their opponents. Ender is sent to the Salamander Army, where his boss, the cocky Bonzo Madrid, doesn't like him from the start. Bonzo tells Ender that he should never fire his gun in a fight, and Ender reluctantly agrees. Over time, though, he gets fed up with Bonzo's orders, and during a fight he pulls out his gun and shoots a lot of enemies. Bonzo is so angry that he hits Ender in the face. Soon after that, he gives Ender to the Rat Army in a trade. Ender climbs to the top of the standings in the battle room and gets known as a great soldier in the Rat Army. Nearly two years have passed on Earth since Ender left. Peter, who is now in his early teens, tells Valentine, who is ten years old, that he wants her help to change the world one day. He says that the bugger wars are coming to an end. When this happens, there will definitely be a big fight on Earth, where the US and Russia are still competing superpowers. Peter wants to control the events that are leading up to this war by writing. He thinks that with Valentine's help, he can become the most powerful person in the world. Peter and Valentine will use computers over the next few months to write a number of famous articles. Peter, who writes under the name Locke, wants peace and security, but Valentine, who writes as Demosthenes, wants conflict and paranoia. Graf wants to make Ender the best commander he can be by giving him a series of tasks that get harder and harder. Ender is put in charge of an army made up of average young students. He is hard on his men, and Bean is the one he picks on the most. Still, Ender leads his troops to win in every battle they fight. Graf makes Ender fight in more battles. Ender starts to hate himself as time goes on. His old friends don't talk to him as much, and when he beats Bonzo easily, he finds out that Bonzo wants to kill him. Ender is taking a shower one day when he turns around and sees Bonzo with a group of people. Ender tries to get Bonzo to fight him one-on-one, -on -one, so he kicks Bonzo in the groin very hard. We find out that Graf is the one who turned Bonzo against Ender and will keep giving Ender harder and harder tasks. Ender hurts Bonzo on the same day that Graf gives him a battle to fight. Ender wins the battle, but he has a nervous breakdown and yells, the game is over. After that, he moves to command school. Ender is sent to Earth with Graf before he moves on. Valentine and Peter have used their writing skills to get to the top of politics on Earth. Peter plans to use Valentine's power to build a strong group of people who will back him. 
Graf, meanwhile, gets Valentine to talk to Ender again. Valentine goes to Florida to see Ender and finds out that the international fleet has changed him into a dangerous killer. Still, she tells Ender in an honest way that she doesn't fear him. Ender is ready to fight because seeing Earth and Valentine again told him that he has to beat the buggers. Ender and Graf go to command school on the planet Eros, which is far away. There, Ender meets Mazer Rackham, his new teacher, who is a well-known figure. Mazer tells Ender what he knows about the buggers, that they can use ESP to talk to each other and that they are controlled by a queen. Mazer killed the buggers' queen to beat them. Mazer gives Ender a series of fights that are made by a computer. Ender also sees a lie, Shin, and Bean, three of his old friends. Ender continues to battle the computer models. After fighting hard fights for months, Ender is told that he only has one more to fight. In it, he will face a big enemy force that is guarding a simulation of the bugger home planet, where the queen lives. Mazer says that Ender will have to decide what to do in the right way. Ender continues to play his game. He decides to bend the rules to end the fight as quickly as possible. He fires a deadly weapon called the Doctor Device at the planet of the buggers, killing the queen and all the other buggers in the process. Ender finds out the truth as he finishes his game, the game was always real. Ender was in charge of real men and fought real buggers as soon as he got to command school. Ender has won the war by making the choice to destroy the bugger planet. Ender is shocked to find out that he has killed off an entire race. He sees that he is a monster and a killer, just like he always thought he was. Then, Ender is stopped from going back to Earth so that he can't be used by other countries. One day, Ender goes to his room and finds Valentine waiting for him there. Valentine tells Ender that Peter, who writes his lock, is quickly rising to power. Peter had planned to use the fact that he was related to Ender to get more power. However, Valentine tricked Peter into making Ender the ruler of a new colony far from Earth. Ender decides to go with Valentine to the new colony, which is on an old bugger planet. There, Ender becomes a well-liked ruler. One day, he goes exploring on his new world and is surprised to find a field with things from his childhood and the giant game from battle school. Ender also finds a big bug pupa there, which turns out to be the last bugger queen. Ender finds out through mental communication with the queen that the buggers had no plans to attack humans again after their first invasion. Ender also knows that the bugger queen has been watching him for years and set up this place so that he could help bring the bugger species back to life and make up for his wrongdoings. Ender agrees to do this, and he and Valentine set off to find a new world where the buggers can live in peace. About the author Orson Scott Card was born in Washington and grew up in California, Arizona, and Utah, among other places. His family was very religious Mormons, and from a young age he read the Book of Mormon. As a young man, he went to Brazil to spread the Mormon faith. After that, he went to school at Brigham Young University and the University of Utah. He majored in English at both schools. He also tried to get his PhD at the University of Notre Dame for a year, but he dropped out to start the Utah Valley Repertory Theater Company. Card ran his theater group and worked at the BYU Press for most of the late 1970s and early 1980s. During this time, Card released Ender's Game, a short story that he would later turn into a novel in 1985. Ender's Game was a big hit with readers and critics, and Card got the prestigious Nebula Award, which is the highest honor for American science fiction writers. The next year, Card wrote Speaker for the Dead, which was a sequel to Ender's Game. It also won the Nebula, making Card one of the few writers to win this award twice. During the 1980s and 1990s, Card wrote a number of other popular books, and he has kept writing a lot in recent years. Card has also started a number of popular places for writers who want to get published. One of these is Strongverse, a website where unpublished authors can send in their work. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.